A warm, warm welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and today I'm bringing you my October wrap-up. As ever, this is going to be a chatty wrap-up because I don't like preparing for these things. I just want to waffle at the camera for like, well, up to 28 minutes because and then I have to change memory card. You can't quite see it. I need to shift the frame down just a teeny bit. That'll do. Uh, I am drinking green tea today for no particular reason other than it's called Campfires and Vampires and... I wanted to say adieu to October, the spookiest month of the year, and hello to November, the month that has my dad's birthday and my brother's birthday. There's probably other important stuff that happens in November, but those are the things that really click in my social calendar. So I'm going to take you through everything I read in the month of October and just have a sort of a little bit of a chat, recap what I liked about it. Maybe I'll talk about the plot, I'll probably forget. We'll just go through everything that sort of happened and we'll have a great time doing it. And that's really what's important. And slowly the caffeine from this green tea will seep into my brain and we will end the video on a high. I am aware that it's super orangey lighting in here. I wanted to film this earlier today, but uh, we went on a spontaneous trip to a service station to pick up a coffee table. So it's been a day. I'm pretty sure that I read 25 books in October. I'm always a little bit anxious that I will have left something off my Goodreads or something will have slipped my mind or I'll have read something at midnight and then forgotten about it in the morning. That has happened before, but I'm pretty sure it is 25 books, which is a really, really good set of things to be read. I'm not going to sniff at that at all. It's pretty damn good. Uh, I'm excited for the last two months of the year. I'm wondering if I can beat what I read last year. Maybe. We'll see. I have good reads up on my phone so that I can actually go through everything. So I started October reading Looking Glass by Christina Henry. Christina Henry is known for writing somewhat spooky, dark books, particularly retellings. This is a collection of short stories in her universe that is her Alice in Wonderland retellings, which I thought I had read, but I hadn't. And I haven't actually looked up to check which ones I had read because it's just too depressing to be wrong to that degree. So maybe I am not the best person to be telling you about this book. So if you are super interested in this, maybe go and find someone who has read the actual series. Um, but I did actually enjoy these. Some of the stories in this were really interesting. I particularly liked, I think it was Girl in Amber? which is like a haunted house kind of story, which was very appropriate for October. I thought they were good. I thought they were well written. They made me think that maybe at some point I will want to read her Alice in Wonderland books. Perhaps I will pick them up one day. But in the meantime, I think maybe it's a lesson learned in checking you have in fact read the original book before you pick up the short stories. A lot of things on this list are books one and two of a series. I'll just say that now. It's an overwhelming amount of either duologies or books one and two. I read books one and two of the Tide Child series, which is The Bone Chips and then the sequel Call of the Bone Chips, which comes out very soon. It may even be this week when you're watching this. I can't remember, but I read that on NetGalley. I will put the cover of that up now so that you may observe it. And then back to this one. I adore this series. It is one of my absolute favourite, all-time favourite seafaring books. It is not quite piracy, it's more naval, but like if the Navy had a ship that was crewed by people who were criminals and bad eggs who sort of did their own thing. It's everything I want. It's like uh, an unlikely group of people banding together. It's about character development in spades. Oh, it's so good. There are sea dragons. In the second one, just things go to places that after reading book one, I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure I know where book two is going to go. And then whoosh, right off in another direction. It is so, so phenomenal. I actually have a review for this coming out, I think on the 9th? I'm pretty sure it's on the 9th. If not, it is very early in November, so that video will be out very, very soon. So, so good, both of them. If you haven't picked these up already and you are a fantasy slash seafaring book lover, I cannot recommend them highly enough. They are so excellent. Also, if you have read them, I apologise for the fact that in my review, I literally never mentioned Glaim. And I can't believe that I didn't. And it's, I'm in awe that I got through the whole thing. For those who don't know, it's a very important character who makes me feel a lot of feelings. And I didn't mention him at all. I just didn't think about it while I was writing it. Weird. After that, one of many, many rereads of this month, I reread Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden. And I was terrified to reread this because I knew it was going to make me cry. And I blubbed like the tiniest little baby. If you haven't encountered the Winter Night trilogy before, again, you need to go and read them. They are one of my favourite series of all time. I would put them in every top list ever. I adore them so much. This is set in Russia in the 13th, 14th century, but with a heavy fantasy folklore fable leaning. And this is probably the most fantasy heavy of all three, I would say. Maybe book one. But this has quite a lot of magic in it. It just ties up the series so well. It's so heartbreaking, the char again, character development in spades, 
I adore it. I cried a lot. I want to reread the series again. Maybe I will over Christmas. After that, I read the next Animorphs book. I think it was Animorphs 11 or 12, honestly. My brain is just a bit gone. I have got the next one lined up ready to read this month, but if you want to find out my thoughts on that Animorphs book, I'll link that. You can go and watch my entire Animorphs series. Give it some love. After that, I picked up an old favourite that was in my rereads jar. I picked up Beyond the Deep Woods by Paul Stewart and Chris Riddell, and this is I think I've talked about it in a video that is coming up very soon. It is probably the oldest book on these shelves that I have ever owned. Like the, the longest time it has been in my possession. Uh, this is from my childhood. This is one of my favorite books. I'd kind of forgotten how much danger and peril there is in this, which is a nice parallel to that Animorphs book, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's very, very good. I think I still have the criticism of these books that the female characters aren't hugely present. That's my one criticism of this and obviously that wasn't a criticism when I was a child because I wasn't really thinking that critically about that. I just loved the drawings and the world and the creatures. I think the creatures are what what makes it great. I really enjoyed rereading this. I think I've got to reread Midnight Over Santa Rex and then I've reread that whole original Twig trilogy, I think. After that, uh, and I do have a video scripted for these, so they will be coming up and into the world at some point soon. The Guinevere Deception and The Camelot Betrayal. This is the first two books in Kirsten White's Camelot Bur Rising. It was Camelot Burning, Falling or Rising. It's Rising, Camelot Rising. Uh, this is where Guinevere has arrives at court to marry King Arthur, but it's not Guinevere, it's sort of a changeling. It's not quite Fae, but it is. She's Merlin's ward. That kind of thing. I enjoy these for what they are, which is like a slight twist on the original King Arthur. They aren't doing it for me in a huge way. If you've watched my vlogs, I have talked about it and it will probably come up in my review. What these books don't do is what I want them to do, which is sort of ignore the meta plot and just have Guinevere and her gang of people go off and do side quests the whole time and just be amazing and awesome and use their feminine wiles and also their amazing fighting skills. Wouldn't that be lovely? But that's not what this is. There's a lot more meta plot. I think this will be the kind of thing where the resolution will make or break whether I hang on to them or not and we'll see how it goes. But yes, video soon to come. I am sorry I'm saying that with a lot of these but I do have this week off so there's a lot of filming to be done. After that I finished Blood of Dragons which is the fourth book in Robin Hobb's Rainwild series that has uh, been the last four months maybe of reading um, <laughs> via audiobook and I actually really really enjoyed the last one. I think probably because it's the one that's pitched YA this has been my favourite series of hers so far. I have also finished another book which I'll come on to right at the end, but of all of her books that I've read so far, I think I just like this because it had the most dragons and honestly, that's all I want in the world. It also had a female academic studying dragons and even though her story didn't go 100% the way I wanted it to, uh, there were some very satisfying moments in this final book and where you've got kind of used to Robin Hobb just sort of tearing your heart out and stamping on it, it was nice to have some people get their comeuppance. That's all I will say about that one. I'm trying to decide, so let me know what you think, whether to do a video for each of the series that I have read or to just do one big, here's what I thought about Realm of the Elderlings when it's all done in maybe six months or so. I think I'm leaning towards doing a bigger video because otherwise I'm just gonna end up saying the same things in each one. But if you really want my opinions split out, let me know and I'll think about it. Asking for opinions, knowing you might ignore them. After that, I reread another books one and two. I reread Children of Blood and Bone and Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Timmy Adeyemi. I really, really liked these the second time around. The first time I read both of them, I kind of thought, eh, fine, bit of YA, it's all good. As ever, reading them back to back made a big difference because you get a lot more of the character development from start to finish. Uh, I also think that they have more impact after this year. And that's really stupid because they should have had that impact the first time. But I think just, I think about things in a different way now. And that's good, but also kind of a, Judith, what were you in the past doing? Being like, eh, I guess this is fine. I think it was really good. And I'm very much looking forward to reading the third one. I think the third one's gonna be a bit weird based on the ending of the second one, but we shall see. Another book that I need to film the review for. It is written, this is Escape Pod. This is to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the podcast of the same name, and it's a collection of short stories from a lot of the contributors to that podcast, including Sarah Gailey, N.K. Jemison, other people whose books I have read. And I don't read a huge amount of sci-fi, so this was in some ways a really good way to experience some of the authors whose names I vaguely know, but whose stuff I've never read. I thought this was a really strong collection. 
has some great winners in it. Obviously, you're never going to love everything in a collection and somebody else will love different ones to you. But I'd say I liked at least 80% of this, so that's pretty good. And the stories that I didn't like, uh, maybe it was partly because they were right at the beginning and they involved difficult childbirth. And I was just frustrated with that choice to put something that is quite triggering to quite a lot of people right at the start of your work. I don't know, it was an odd editorial choice, but the stories themselves are very good and I will have a video detailing some of my favourites and what I think you should read from this in the future. Okay, now we're getting into my Judith TBR is reaching the end, so she's getting to the books that she doesn't really want to read, so she starts picking up different books phase. So I didn't have an audiobook to read, so I picked up Shadow Scale by Rachel Hartman. This is the sequel to Serafina, which I think I read last month or the month before. Uh, I had read this before, had it by audiobook before, probably from the library before. Anyway, this is a really good sequel. It's sort of like a completely separate book. It obviously follows the same characters and the events of book one, but the plot is so different. It's really enjoyable. I think there's some really strong elements to it. Uh, there's a lot of the book that I found really interesting in the world building, particularly the difference between Gored, where the main characters are from, and the places they go, including Porphyry. I can't speak to how great it is as representation because it leans so heavily fantasy, but also so clearly inspired by some real life aspects. And it's hard to draw the lines of this is a fictional society and this is you depicting a real life culture that you've changed the name of. Hard to say, but not really my place to say either. So I definitely enjoyed it. I thought it was a good book and I've always thought it was a good book and I enjoy it greatly. And I need to work out what's happened to my copy of Tess of the Road. I don't actually know who, who has it and I don't need it back, the person who has it, but... Uh, it would be useful to let me know that you have it because I would like to reread it at some point. Over the next week or so after that, I reread all three books in the Paper Magician series by Charlie N. Holmberg. And I don't necessarily recommend you go and pick up this series because it has some problematic elements. I don't want to say give it your money, but it is super comforting reading for some reason. And I really like the magic system. So we have this main character, Sieni, who goes through magic school and then she wants to become a metal magician, a smelter, but she gets assigned to a paper magic folding, which is essentially like magical origami, which is the hook of the books. And then her, the guy she's apprenticed to is a, a very nice young paper magician. And I think you can get where this is going, but it's sort of like three very action packed, quite dark books that are also romance novels. I think I said this in a vlog. Every time I read them, I notice another thing that I'm like, oh, I don't think you'd get away with writing that now. And they're not that old. Uh, so mm, I don't want to say go out and read them immediately, but uh, I can't deny that I find them enjoyable. Uh, what isn't a trash thing that I have read was The Light Between Worlds by Laura Weymouth. This made me cry for a long time, just like sat on the sofa. I think Katie was in a video call and I was just behind her on the sofa like, <laughs> Uh, so that was fun. This is a book about, it's about two sisters. There is a brother as well, but it's mainly focused on two sisters of this family. And the siblings definitely went to not Narnia, a place that is legally distinct from Narnia uh, and came back. And it's about the two sisters coping. And one of them who takes up the first half of the book isn't really coping with being back. And the other one is maybe arguably equally not coping, but coping in a different way. The book follows them and I just think it's beautiful. And I, I've said it before and I say it again, I think it's a beautiful description of depression and what it's like to have depression and what it's like to witness someone you love with depression and not be able to do anything about it because depression is depression. Oh, it's hard, but so, so beautiful and so well written. Obviously there's a lot of triggering stuff in it, but they do include trigger warnings right at the start of the book. I'm pretty sure they were definitely somewhere. Maybe they were on the Goodreads page. You broke my heart again. Still on rereads. Me, Justine and Asher, or Justine, Asher and I, to be grammatically correct, reread Master of Sorrows together, or Justine read it for the first time. Asher and I read it for the second time because Asher is reading the sequel. And for most of reading this, I was like, why have I hung on to this? I'm not super into it, it's kind of air. And then I got to the last 50 pages or so, and I remembered how excited I am for book two, and for some of the things that I think and hope are going to happen in the second book. You'd better not disappoint me, Justin Cole. You'd better not. This is about a young boy called Anev, and he is in a society where any deformity is really bad, but he has a missing arm, but it's a secret, and he's also training to be kind of like a... They're sort of like monks who look after magical artefacts, and sometimes they have to go out and get magical artefacts and bring them back. And he's training to be one of those, but it's a very exclusive job, uh, and he has to hide the fact that he has one arm, and there's all sorts of background legends and stuff happening, and this is a lot of setup 
for what I think is going to be a really powerful series. After that, I reread The Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger by René Ardier. This is a YA fantasy romance duology about Shahrazad, and it sort of starts off with that story and then runs with it in maybe a slightly unique direction. I really enjoy the story of these, I really enjoy the characters and the romance and the side characters, and some bits of it are genuinely very difficult. Again, it's a book one that goes off in a different direction for book two, which is interesting. I had a lot of that this month. I think it's because I've been reading a lot of duologies. I'm, everything's got a little bit out of order now, but that's fine. Uh, I reread Aragon by Christopher Paolini. This is the first book in the Inheritance Cycle. Uh, I enjoyed this more than I thought I was going to, partly for nostalgia's sake and partly because I think I had it in my head that I was going to find it horrible rereading it. And I've not reread this for quite a few years, despite how battered this copy is. It's a boy, farm boy fantasy, he finds a dragon. I always wanted to find a dragon. It's sort of wish fulfillment for me. I will say, if you've never read these before, Aragon is super slow to start. It's like 300, 400 pages of just walking from place to place gaining information because he starts out as a farm boy and he has to learn quite a lot about the world. I'd say maybe just sort of skim through the first bit of Aragon until you get to the exciting bits and then go back and read it later and be like, ah yes, I can see where this was all maybe slightly leading up to something else. The later books I think are better. He is more annoying as a character, but the other characters are more interesting and the world building's better. I don't know, this isn't a series I'm ever confident in recommending because I'm aware that I look at it with such rose-tinted spectacles, but also dragons, so I don't have any anything more insightful to say. Getting towards the end of the month now, I reread Six of Crows and then I reread Crooked Kingdom. Obviously this is the Six of Crows duology by Lee Bardugo. I'm actually going to hold up Crooked Kingdom because I definitely enjoyed Crooked Kingdom a lot more. I think there's value to reading them back to back, you get a little bit more character development, but this there's so much putting the gang together and so much of Kaz's backstory and Kaz is kind of the least interesting character of all of them. Whereas Crooked Kingdom goes into detail about some other people a bit more, I definitely enjoyed it. Could have done with less throwbacks to the Grisha trilogy, I understand why they're there, but as a person who didn't enjoy the Grisha trilogy, I don't really care that much, um, but definitely enjoyable YA heist stuff. I can definitely see why people like this a lot. I like it a lot too. Obviously I own the special editions. Uh, I'm excited to see what the Netflix adaptation does eventually with this. Oh, there's, there's something about YA fantasy. It just gets me. It just gets me. All right, now we really are nearly at the end. The last physical book that I finished this month was Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. When I started the week that I was going to read this, this was last week, I said I might unhaul it if I didn't love it. And I thought I was going to find it very, very irritating because what I remembered was that this just sort of went, let's focus really hard on the romance. But on a reread, I didn't feel that quite as much. It's much more focused on the even more joyous topic of child abuse. Uh, <laughs> uh, so guys, this, this is kind of difficult. It's child abuse in the context of he's a pirate king, so it's not quite as close to home as some other things might be. But oh, it gets to some dark business. I think this duology as a whole is kind of silly fun with a dark edge as most YA fantasy ends up being. Alosha is a good character, the romance is there and it's sort of fine. I really wanted more time spent with this all-female or mostly female pirate crew, that was kind of what the selling point was for me, and don't think you get that in this duology, which is sad, but I, I think I am going to hang on to them for now on the off chance that I reread them one day when I'm in the mood for that kind of romance. The final thing that I finished, which I wasn't expecting to finish in October, but I did, it was right down to the wire, it was probably at midnight, uh, I finished, what's it called? Fool's Errand, the first book in the 20 Man series by Robin Hobb. I started the next series and I very much enjoyed it. I like older fits a lot more than I liked very young fits, which won't make sense to anyone who hasn't read these books, but for those of you who have, I'm a big fan of older fits. One aspect of the story did crush my heart and soul and I will not forgive the person who recommended these books to me because I, I am broken forever over the various things that have happened. <laughs> but uh, the actual plot of it's very, very good. I think I'm really, really excited for some of the various plot threads across the series to come together in a kind of Avengers Assemble kind of moment. I don't think that's going to happen in the way that I would think it would. If that, I, that made no sense as a sentence, but basically I think it's going to be much quieter than it would be if somebody else were writing it because Robin Hobb is quite a subtle person. I get that in her writing. I could be completely misinterpreting that, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a really interesting series. 
Uh, and then I think there's another series that I need to pick up after that. I need to look into it. That's what I need to do. But yes, I'm going to pick up the next one when my next Audible credit comes in. But now that doesn't come in until the end of the month, so... Well done, me! Those are the 25 books that I read in the month of October. I am very impressed with myself. There was some really good stuff on this list. Yes, most of it's rereads, and I think that's part of why I did manage to read a lot, because I wasn't having to take in a lot of new information. But a lot of what I'm doing at the moment is rereading, because I own the books and I love the books. I want to reread them, and that's just sort of the way it is. And I'm having a really good time doing it, because also, I have a memory like a sieve. So it's essentially like reading a book again with the occasional moment where, oh yeah, that did happen. If you haven't already watched my November TBR, you can do so to get a sneak preview of what might come in a month's time. As I've said multiple times throughout this video, there will also be video reviews coming up for quite a few of these if they're not already out. So do subscribe so you can watch those. Comment below if you've read anything interesting this month, what was your top book of the month or what was your worst book of the month, I would like to know. While you're commenting you can also follow me on all of my social media, that's linked below. You can also subscribe if you hadn't when I mentioned it before because it makes me feel loved and appreciated. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's got a piece of bloopers now. I am red. I am red. Let us start at the very beginning. Have I said I think I've committed? No, I haven't. <laughs> you will not fall off. No, I refuse. After that, I picked up an old favourite. This was in my reread jar. This is Beyond the Deep Wads. Deep Wads. Wayne, Wayne, Wayne Wilde series. I can't say it. Why are my bookshelves so dusty? They're on everything. 